finally make it through Romans chapter 3 today. Yes, we are. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, finally. Well, this is probably the chapter that has some of the heaviest words in it. Uh, and today we're going to explore just a little bit of what does this mean, that the righteous shall live by faith, or uh, that a person is justified by faith apart from works of the law. I'm going to quiz you on that, okay? okay. All right? And uh, if anything, people may want to have their Bibles open to Romans chapter 3. We're looking at verses 27 to 31. We have actually just talked about how Jesus becomes the center of this whole conversation. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was only mentioned for the first time in this book since verse 7 of chapter 1. Finally, way over here in chapter 3, yes. uh, because Paul's been going through all sorts of other arguments. So let's see if we can understand this. And Kate, I'm going to let you go ahead and read, and then get ready. Okay. I'm going to quiz you. All right. Okay. Starting at verse 27 of chapter 3. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principles? On that of observing the law. No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith, apart from observing the law. Is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith, and the uncircumcised through the, that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. So here we've got all sorts of concepts playing together. Remember, we talked somewhere up here is the word both, that Paul is trying to talk about just a portion of the world? No, no. everyone. Everyone, okay. And then he also made a long point that underneath the, uh, underneath the judgment gap, is it just the Jewish people that are under the gallon? No. Or it's also, once again, everyone. everyone is under the gallon. And that all of us have to understand, and we had law up here at one point. Yeah, here it is. That the law at one point helps diagnose we've got a disease. That's upside down, but that's all right. The disease plays us upside down. The disease is? Sin. Sin. And the wages of sin is? Death. Death. Every one of us falls under the judgment. Now we come uh, to this little passage, and this was a key passage for uh, Dr. Martin Luther. This was a key passage that he had to really stumble and struggle over to try and understand what does it mean to be called righteous before God by faith? What does this mean? Um, we come back to that. So I think maybe it would be good for us to think through uh, our relationship with uh, the law, mm -hmm. the attempts that we have to try and somehow make ourselves look right. So um, I'm going to ask you, Kate, I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to think through um, what are the ways, whether they be human or religious, that people try to get right with God. What are some ways that we try to prove ourselves before God or get right with God? By the way, there's a big church word for that. It's how do we get at one with God or atonement? How do we get that atonement with God? So what are some ways that you can think of that people have done historically or people still do? By doing better. That somehow, if um, if the divine parent comes down and says, you made a mistake, then you make a childlike promise, I'll do better, okay, yeah, I'll do better next time, and we keep trying to do better, does it ever get us all the way? No. It doesn't? Okay. All right. What are some other ways that we try to find that at one with with God, the one who created us? By putting others down. More above them. Ooh, okay. Well, I can put that back in the analogy of a brother or sister, and I know you're you're single in your house, but 
brothers and sisters are notorious for saying, yeah, but they did it worse than me, you know, and pointing to somebody else. Does that happen out in the world too? Yes. Yeah, if we can put somebody else down, then maybe we'll exalt ourselves. But does it finally put us at one with God? No. No, okay. Well, I think there's probably some other ways. And in fact, historically, there's other ways that people have tried to fulfill that law, somehow get out from under that judgment. Can you think of some other ways people have done it? The sacrifice. Sacrifice is an age-old thing. I, in fact, they would put animals or they would put vegetables up on the altar and say, I'm sorry, God, for what I've done, and seek for some sense of that one-ment, uh, atonement in, in some way. But every time, I wonder why they sacrificed animals. Maybe, maybe because as a sense of, uh, I have taken life by doing something wrong, so I need to somehow give that life acknowledgement in some way before God. Um, ultimately and finally, does any of our, and I'm asking this very carefully, does any of our action ultimately make us right with God? Does any of our action make us right with God? No. Okay. And we finally have to let who do the making right with us? God. God is the one who's going to have to do this. So I want you to read verse 28 again. Okay. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Now, I said that's a key verse. I hope that everybody underlines that verse in their Bible just to remember this one. But we, we need to talk about this one too. So we are justified by faith. And when you and I were talking about this before, I asked you the question, we're justified by faith. What does that mean? That we need to be saved. Ah, yeah, you went back to your, <laughs> you went back to the new answer because we first talked about somehow it's what we believe that somehow it makes us right with God. That somehow we have to have the faith. But actually, it does not say we make ourselves right by faith. No, it doesn't. It's passive voice, which says a person is justified or faith. made right with God. So who does the making right? God. What's the faith part of that then? Us accepting it. Us accepting it or us, um, I think we were talking about another word too, us receiving it. So here we've we've had these images. I'm going to do this twice with you, Kate. We've had these images of God in Jesus pouring out his lifeblood of being that gift of peace for us and of being God's action for us. So it's all been poured out for us then it comes out to us, and we have, or we then have, to grasp it or hold it. We get to, we get the opportunity to hold it. Uh, I want to point out that this is the good news. And do you know what the big word is for good news in the Bible? Gospel. This is the gospel. As a point, as a, as a contrary to the law, which points out. You can't justify yourself before God. You won't be able to do it. God's going to have to do the work. It always points us to the gospel that God is somehow going to do this for us. And we'll talk about this faith. You can let go, Kate. We'll talk about this faith part uh, and justify it by faith with one of my famous oranges here. And we're going to explore this in chapters to come. Okay. So if I were to tell you, Kate, this orange is yours. It is a gift for you, okay? okay? And then I give you the orange. But then at this point, you have to be willing to accept it or receive it. Receive it. Yeah, to just receive it, okay? 
Are there still questions in your head that is Pastor John going to take that orange back right after this filming is done? Yes. It, there are still questions. But I just said, and the promise is there. The gospel is there, the good news. That orange belongs to whom? Me. It is yours. But you have by faith to hold on to that. Even though you may still have doubts. In the same way, we are made right with God. Through Jesus, of course. But we cling to that. We hold to that. Even though we may have second thoughts. Okay? Second, second questions. We claim that we are... We are... Uh, we are recipients of God's grace. We are made right with God, atoned with God, by faith, not by anything that we can do. So, Kate, enjoy your orange. I will. All right. We'll see you later, neighbor. See you later, neighbor. Haven't you peeled that yet? <laughs> no, not yet. I gave you a big one, didn't I? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm.